for the point guard position, who do you have? So I wanted to ask, are we considering rookies uh, not coming into the league, but guys going to the second year? Yes. Okay. So um, I want to give a nod to Scoot Henderson here. I think that there was a lot of overreaction on how bad he was. Um, and I've, I do a series leading up to the season beginning where I look at every team in depth. And Scoot was in a role that a lot of young guys don't excel in. Okay, He was an on-ball creator with a bad team. He didn't shoot the ball well at the rim, um, turned the ball over a lot. But even his true shooting percentage, which was really bad among the rest of the league, was not even in the bottom 10 to 15 percent of players in his role that have been drafted since 2014. And I think with the improvement in infrastructure, Donovan Klingon is going to do a lot for him. I think the game's going to slow down. He was still incredibly productive as a playmaker. He was in the top 10 of the 46 on-ball guards who are like younger than 21 that have been drafted since 2014. So. I'm really encouraged by his advantage creation. I'm encouraged by the fact that they have a little bit more solid pieces around him. So I think he's going to be a lot better this season than people may expect because I saw some crazy takes, and I don't really think that's going to be his reality. I like Scoot Henderson a lot there. How did you feel like the Anthony Simons dynamic um, coincided with his his struggles? Do you think mm. it helped him or it hurt him because Simons is somebody that eased the ball as well? Yeah, and that, I think that whole three-guard situation is interesting in Portland. You can't have all three on the floor. When I was looking at the numbers, they had like a negative 35 net rating, something ridiculous with all three of them on the floor. You just can't survive defensively. Um, and I think the thing about Simons is that he's such a great shooter that, you know, feasibly he could play a little bit more off the ball, but he is the, at the best with the ball in his hands. I think I need to clear that up. We need to figure out, is it going to be Shaden and Scoot? Is it going to be Ant and Shaden? I think it's too early to give up on Scoot. I think even with Sharp too, he's really special. And Anthony has the most value of anyone on that team, in my opinion. So I would be trying to see what I could do for him. But I think that definitely is a contributing factor just because there's not like – when he's on the floor by himself, yes, you know, he's running the offense. But if he's sharing it with someone like Simons, it, it can be a little bit tough. Scoot Henderson was my honorable mention. I had a feeling you were going to mention him. That's why I didn't, I didn't put him as a, my guy. Mine is Deuce McBride. Okay. I think yeah. uh, now with Dante DiVincenzo being out of New York, with Mitchell Robinson being hurt to start the season, he instantly becomes a Knicks sixth man. And as a starter last year, granted, he played 43 minutes per game in, in the games that he started. But he averaged 18 points per game, four assists, and three rebounds, and shot 41% from three on nine attempts. I, I think that with this role, I've seen it with Knicks point guards in the past, where whenever, with Emmanuel quickly, whenever we give somebody that boost and opportunity, they break out into a legitimate six-man-of-the-year candidate. And I think Deuce McBride can do a lot of the same. Yeah, do you think he'll also sometimes step in as a starter next to Josh Hart? I I think there's, I don't think the spacing will necessarily be a concern, but just to give a little bit more creation next to Jalen Brunson, could you see that, like maybe on a game to game basis? I could see it because sometimes he's our best closer because he's so good defensively. And I, dating back to West Virginia, I mean he locked up Cade Cunningham when when they faced uh right, yeah. Oklahoma State. So Deuce McBride is an excellent defender, and I think even with him on the court, you don't lose your defensive identity. I think it actually might strengthen it because I think Josh Hart is a solid defender, but he's more of a hustle player. He's getting rebounds. I think yeah. McBride is more of a better defender than him, but that's who I had as my breakout point guard, Deuce. I think he'll fill um, a six-man role and he'll be one of the leading six-man-of-the-year candidates. I could see top five. The Scoot Henderson point that you made earlier, his rookie season by the numbers was like really, really bad. Mm -hmm. What type of leap do you think he'll take? Do you think it's a similar situation to Darius Garland? I think Darius Garland is a good comparison point. So some of the guys that I sort of identified as someone that, you know, they got written off real early. Guys like Darius Garland, Cole Anthony, Marcus Smart, RJ, he was a, he had a higher true shooting percentage than, or he's a little bit behind Garland, Cole Anthony, and Marcus Smart. But he had a higher true shooting percentage in his rookie year than RJ Barrett and De'Aaron Fox. So while they're all of those 46 on ball guards, there are some busts. It's guys like Emmanuel Moutier, um, Alfred Payton, but there's also some of the better guards in the league today. And it's because their teams were patient with them. Um, and in his, he was in the bottom five and estimated plus minus this season, which again, sort of the expectation for a younger guard. In 2021 or 2020, when there were five guards on the 21 who were in the bottom five, it was Anthony Simons, Malik Monk, Darius Garland, Kobe White, Jordan Poole, all impactful players all guys who have improved massively since that season. So I do think it's, it may, it may not be this necessarily upcoming season, but I think he'll be fine. Like, I I think when you have, and here's the thing too, I'll see a lot of times people will draw parallels to someone like a, 
like a Derrick Rose of like these super uber athletic guards who can't shoot. Um, but he's a better playmaker than Derrick Rose. He's a better playmaker than even Malik Monk. So just to give you some of the numbers, he was 10th in draw out again out of those 45 guards. He was 10th in drives for 75. He was seventh in assist points, 10th in rim shot creation, eighth in high value assist. And even with all the bad pieces around him, fluctuations in the lineup, like Portland had there were only two teams in the NBA that did not have a lineup that, that did not have two lineups that played at least 200 possessions together. It was them and Memphis. Now Memphis had missed the most games due to injury, but Portland had so much fluctuation on a night to night basis. It was never going to be a good environment for him. And somehow, despite all that, he was still in the 80th percentile as a pick and roll ball handler. And when you look at his numbers with Aiden off the floor versus when Aiden was on, because Duop Reef was a better screener. He could space the floor better. He was, uh, almost positive. He, I think his rim finishing jumped by seven percentage points. So that just tells you, first off, Aiden can't set a screen. But second off, with better personnel around him, he's going he's gonna to increase. He's going to be more productive. He's going to be more efficient. Um, so I do think we'll see something similar. Now, Darius Garland sort of formed himself into an all-star within two seasons. I'm not saying that that quickly just because of the shooting. Um, but I do think he'll be closer to a positive impact player. And as they continue to develop, then you'll start to see him in the conversations with those younger guards that are going to be leading the NBA into the next era, at least in my opinion. DeAndre and yeah. his his empty stats. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's more so like he. It's crazy because when they asked him in the, uh, I don't understand how he went number one, but his mentality has always been like, my idea of success is a second contract. That's always stuck with me. As soon as I heard that, I was like, okay, this, he doesn't care. And so that's why I think with him off the screening is an effort thing, rolling hard is an effort thing, even is an effort thing. He was able to do it in Phoenix. It's not a great situation in Portland. I just think he's complacent and he's happy with where he is in terms of the contract he's on and the situation he's in. I don't know what you'd have to do to light the fire under him because he's still physically gifted. Like, if you look at that dude, bro, like, it's really no excuse for him to be as poor defensively or as a screener as he is. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he's he was a pretty good mid-range shooter, um, but he's not impacting it, the game. Really no one on that Portland team was, so. I feel like Portland with Klingon, it's going to do so much for Scoot. I don't mm-hmm. feel like they're in a weird place with the roster where I- I'd probably be looking to move on from DeAndre in and-, and get whatever I can. I don't know if any team is going to be willing to trade for him. And maybe Anthony Simons. I know his shooting is so important, but I want to see Anthony Simons in a situation where he can be at his best. And I think because they drafted Scoot, it's not going to be in Portland. Yeah. I mean, they got a bunch of dudes you could look into moving. Tybo as well. Um Jer- Robert Williams, I think, Jeremy Grant. Like, they have pieces that could make sense for a contender. I just don't understand where their value is because Jeremy Grant's on a big contract. Thibault isn't a 16-game player. Aiden, he, his motor is garbage. And then I think Simon – that's why I think Simons could be the guy they end up – because they're not going to just go give guys away. I mean, you saw even with the Drew Holiday trade, like, they did that kind of despite Miami, but they still got some consequential stuff back. Like, Malcolm Brogdon, who they didn't flip again, and they were able to get um, assets from that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's – they have to figure that out. It's just a lot of it's a it's a weird mix. Like I was looking at the age distribution. Like you've got the they're one of the oldest teams at wing or at forward, but they're one of the youngest at point guard and combo. So it's they got a weird mix of vets up there. So they got to clean that up. 